Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. My name is Guang Ke Chen from Shanghai Tech University in Shanghai, China. Today I will be talking about our paper, Who is the Real Ball? and with several attacks on speaker recognition systems. It is a joint work with Sun Chen, Li Ling Fan, Xiao Ning Du, Zhe Zhao, Fu Song, and Yang Liu. As the title of our paper implies, the topic of our paper is I will sell attacks on speaker recognition systems. So first, let me briefly introduce the basic concepts of speaker recognition. Speaker recognition is an automatic technique that recognizes a person's identity based on his or her speeches. Nowadays, speaker recognition has lots of applications, including why the system wake up, such as Hey Siri, Personalized service on smart home. Identity authentication in financial transaction. And application login by voice print. As can be seen above, speaker recognition system is mostly used in safety critical scenery. So once the system is broken, it will cause property damage, reputation degrade, sensitive information leak, and so on. So, the security of speaker recognition systems is very important. The mainstream implementation of speaker recognition is machine learning. However, machine learning has been demonstrated to be vulnerable to our several examples. I think most of you are quite familiar with this picture. The binary example contains a panda, and the machine learning model correctly recognized the binary example as a panda. The attacker adds perturbation to the binary example to compute an LSL example. Although the LSL example still looks like a panda to human users, the machine learning model recognizes the LSL example as a given with very high confidence. The picture on the right is an example of LSL attack in speech to test domain. So here, there is a natural question. Is our cell attack practical on speaker recognition systems? We answer this question by proposing an attack called Feibok. Feibok is black box. It can be applied to general speaker recognition tasks. It remains effective on commercial speaker recognition systems. It is effective in over-the-air attack. Before I present the detail of our attack Feibok, let's have a look at the frame model we use in our paper. There is a victim speaker model in this picture. In a more case, a piece of voice from an illegal speaker will be rejected by the victim speaker model. The attacker adds perturbation to the original voice to compute an adversary voice. The adversary voice can successfully pass the voice authentication of the victim speaker model, that is, being upset by this model. So, the attacker can gain access to privilege of the victim. The attacker has no any information about the model internal structure or parameters. He is limited to query the victim speaker model, that is, provide some inputs and obtain the outputs. This is the overview of our attack feedback. There are four major components. Firstly, since the generation of our several voices is formulated as an optimization problem, the first thing we need to do is to design the loss function. Our goal is that the loss function should be a good indicator of whether the attack succeeds or not. That is, the loss function is less than or equal to yellow if and only if the attack succeeds. After several try, we design the loss function based on the scoring and decision-making mechanism of speaker recognition systems. For example, because the open site identification task makes the decision based on a predefined threshold, we incorporate this threshold into the loss function. In addition, since different tasks have different scoring and decision making mechanisms, we design different loss functions for different tasks. Secondly, unlike image classification, speaker recognition systems make decision based on a predefined threshold. Only when the maximum score of adversary voices is larger than the threshold can the attack succeed. 
Unfortunately, this fraso is unknown to the attacker. To adjust this problem, we propose a fraso estimation algorithm. Once we obtain the estimated fraso, we replace the true fraso in the loss function with the estimated one. Our estimated fraso is larger than the true fraso. This guarantees that the attack will succeed. At the same time, our estimated fraso is not too far from the true fraso, so the attack will not be too expensive. In white box attack, the attacker usually used by propagation to obtain the exact gradient, which is then used to solve the optimization problem. However, bad propagation is not available in black box attack because the attacker has no information about model structures or parameters. So here, we use natural evolution strategy-based gradient estimation method to estimate gradients instead of using the exact gradients. This method only relies on scores and decisions returned by victim speaker model when we query the model. This allows us to achieve black box attack. After we obtain the estimated gradient information, we can use it to solve the optimization problem by gradient descent. And finally, we can obtain the adversary voices. Adversary attack in speech domain can be divided into API attack and over-the-air attack. API attack means the attacker directly feeds the adversary voices to the model by the model's API. In contrast, to launch over-the-air attack, the attacker needs to play the adversary voices by some loudspeakers. Then the adversary voices are transmitted in the air channel and finally received by the microphones of speaker recognition devices. Over the air attack is more challenging than API attack. The reason is that the noise introduced in the air channel will make the attack lose effectiveness. Previous work solved this problem by modeling the noise during the generation of adversary voices. The limitation of this solution is that it is somehow environment and device dependent. Instead, our solution is to simply improve the confidence of the adversary voices. Although our solution is a little simple, our experimental result shows that our solution is quite effective. Okay, now let's turn to the experimental results. On open source systems, our attack favor can achieve nearly 100% attack successful rate. We also evaluate our attack favor on two commercial speaker recognition systems. The first one is TalentySoft. Because TalentySoft returns both scores and decision after we query the victim speaker model, we directly generate adversary voices on this system. Our attack achieved 100% attack successful rate, and the average number of queries is 2,500. The second one is Microsoft Azure, because Microsoft Azure only returns decisions after we query the victim speaker model. We use transfer attack to attack this system. Our attack favor achieved 26% attack successful rate on the victim speaker model much lower than that on Talented Soft. The reason is that transfer attack inherently suffers from low attack successful rate. For ODR attack, our attack remains effective across different distance between the loudspeaker and the microphone. When the distance between loudspeaker and microphone is no more than 2 meters, our attack favor can achieve at least 70% attack successful rate. We consider three different types of loudspeakers, laptop, portable speaker, and broadcast equipment. We also consider two different microphones. The first one is the microphone on I.O. system. The other one is the microphone on Android system. Totally, we have six different combinations of loudspeaker and microphones. No matter what the combination is, our attack favor can achieve at least 70% attack successful rate. This shows that 
our tech is device independent to some extent. We simulate different acoustic environments by introducing different types of noises, such as white noise, bus noise, restaurant noise, and music noise. When the noise is less than 60 dB, our tech fable can achieve at least 48% attack successful rate. This shows that our tech is environment independent to some extent. Our cellular tech should not only make the machine learning model misbehave, but should also be imperceptible for human beings. So we need to evaluate the imperceptibility of our tech fable. However, imperceptibility has different meanings in different domains. For image classification, imperceptibility means human recognize the original and adversary images as the same object. For speech to test, imperceptibility means the user hears the same sentence in the original and adversary speeches. So, First, we have to define what imperceptibility means in speaker recognition. Suppose Alice is the source speaker and she utters a voice. The attacker adds perturbation to the original voice to compute an adversary voice. Box speaker model thinks the adversary voice is uttered by Bob himself. However, a third person thinks the adversary voice is from Alice when listening to this voice. And this is the imperceptibility in speaker recognition. We conduct a quantity analysis of imperceptibility of our tech feedback. Our question is that how many people think adversary and original voices are uttered by the same speaker? To get the answer, we carry out a human study on Amazon Mechanical Turk. For API attack, 64.9% of people think our serial and original voices are uttered by the same speaker, indicating good imperceptibility of our attack feedback. For over-the-air attack, the result is 34%, lower than that of API attack. This is not surprising because to launch over the air attack, we need to improve the confidence of adversary voices. This will introduce larger perturbation to the adversary voices, so the perceptibility becomes worse. Okay, that's all for today's presentation. Thanks for your attention. If you want to know more about our tech feedback, you can explore our official website. In addition, we have released our code for reproducing our experimental results. Thanks for listening again. Bye-bye.